Insomnia from UnrealTech.net, a division of BlenderTech.com. Now that we've gone over the basics to creating the framework, now that we've gone over the basics to creating the framework for a multiplayer game in Steam or local area networks, let's start diving into some of the core fundamentals of networking that will allow us to take any regular game logic, whether it be shooting, health, moving, etc and make it work for up to 32 players. There's a, there's a whole lot more to it than just enabling Steam. You need to set your game up so that it's networked. So in this video, I'm going to explain um, just the basic fundamentals behind replication so you understand what replication means and also how to test networking. So with that said, remember our motto, create your way and let's get started. I'm going to draw really quick the basics of networking before we get started because I think this information will save you a lot of headaches in the future. Um, trying to think of, okay, should this run on the server, the client, should this run in multicast, should it be reliable, and so on and so forth. And so by going over this, we'll, we'll learn what's really happening behind the scenes when you start using the different methods of replication in Unreal Engine 4. So just being able to create the ability to host and join a game, like I said, is not going to get you far. To make a game actually work in multiplayer, you need to understand what replication is. Unreal Engine 4 setup, like most setups, are what's called a client server model. So what we have is we have someone playing they have a machine that's playing your game you know whatever they are the server and you have a multitude of clients that can talk to the server so let's say in this example we have four clients so we have client one two three four and the server so this is a server client model and it's used in most if not all multiplayer games um, so the server who is either uh, the host who set up the game or a dedicated machine if they weren't playing um, a back and forth between a number of clients thus server client model pretty simple the communication is most of the time going to happen from the server to the client and back and this will happen back and forth and back and forth between every single client now you may rarely see a client to client communication but this is extremely rare and uh, I think in all of our tutorials we will really not come across it it is possible but for the most part not only to prevent cheating but just the basics of networking um, we we want everything to happen on the server all the replication and so on um, this this kind of gives us a standard or a base if you will on which to act on so let's say that you're playing Counter-Strike, for example. You're client one and you shoot your gun. And bam. Whoa. Bam, you shot your gun. So let's say you just shot your gun into space. So you saw that you shot your gun. You're playing it, obviously. But what's actually happening in a multiplayer game is when you shoot your gun, you're telling the server, I shot my gun. And the, the server is giving you information back as well as any other clients that are relevant, which we'll get into later. So you've shot your gun, the server tells you information back, such as if you hit it or anything, or to play an effect such as an explosion or whatever. So the server is handling most, if not all, information uh, back and forth from all clients 
to themselves from the server. Some things like sound and particles, um, they can usually be handled client side so the client can do his own sound because it doesn't really matter if you shoot a gun, the server doesn't need to know that you're playing a sound. We'll just assume that all of the players are going to play that sound, and since the sound means nothing to gameplay, you don't need to worry about it. However, anything that is gameplay important, as a general rule, should be run through this client-server model. Um, anything to do with uh, gameplay anything that's not cosmetic basically so your your heads up display your GUI that can usually be handled mostly client side but everything else for the most part is going to be handled on the server so this goes back to the standard that um, basically we are all basing our gameplay on the server's decision and not ours so it prevents cheating like I said and and like I said it gives you a standard to basically um, base all the information that you are getting up so when we did the steam tutorial we did what's called a listen server if you remember we added the listen argument to the map when we hosted a game what a listen server means is that the server is playing the game. So they have their mouse and keyboard and they're sitting there, they're playing the game and they're, they're happy-go-lucky. So um, that's a listen server. They are playing the game, they're a server, they're the host, but they're also listening for any replicated data coming from other clients and they send out um, replicated data to other clients so again that's the whole back and forth thing unreal does allow dedicated servers so that's when we have no guy and we just have information so again that's when it's just the server it's just the machine and it allows you to do more complicated things because you have more bandwidth. You don't have to worry about playing the game on the server. It is harder to set up in blueprints, if not on nearly or close to impossible. A dedicated server, however, just means that the server is running usually a basic form of the game that only runs the networking functions and nothing else. That way it's super efficient, you can handle a lot more, you'll get less lag, and so on and so forth. So in the tutorials to come, and any networking tutorials I do in the future, I'll be using and talking about the term replication very, very often. It's at the core of networking in the server-client model, and that's just the word that's kind of the standard. But what exactly does replication mean? Well, in a nutshell, replication is basically the information being sent back and forth between a server and client and how it should be performed. So in what order, who does what, and so on. Maybe the server does everything, maybe the client can do some stuff itself, like I said, sound, particles, GUI. Um, so this is replication. We're talking some sort of data and we're talking about sending it to other machines to do certain commands based on that data that we send back and forth. So again, uh, you shoot your gun, so you tell the server I shot my gun, the server tells client 4 and 3, let's say uh, client 1 shot his gun because you guys are close enough to hear and see it. And they say, okay, uh, we saw that, we played some effects, and it didn't hit us, so we're not going to change our health, and everything's back to normal. That's replication. You're sending data back and forth, and doing something with it if required. So take Counter-Strike, for example, again. If you shoot your gun and you hit Client 4, you don't send out a replicated command saying, I shot client 4, you're hurt. You have to take off 10 HP. 
Instead, you tell the server, I shot my gun in this direction. And then the server um, then tells you, okay, well, you happen to hit client four, and so we're gonna take a few bullets off of you, and you say, okay, well, here's how many bullets I have, and the server tells you, okay, well, you're gonna have this many bullets left, and the server tells client four you got hit so we need your help and then client four sends his health back and the server says okay well client one did 10 damage so we need to subtract 10 damage from your health and so it goes back and forth you're replicating this information back and forth back and forth all over the place so you can think of that as a ammo and health replication. You're replicating your ammo and you're replicating health. So lastly, let's uh, open up Unreal really quick and show you how to set it up for testing networking. We don't always have two, three, four, eight, 16, 32 players to test with us, but luckily uh, you can do that in Unreal Engine 4. So we have here the uh, multiplayer shootout example game. And what not a lot of people know is yes, you have the play in editor um, ability by hitting the play button, but there's this little arrow up here. Let me change my editor preferences so you guys can see that a little bit better. So yeah, when we hit play, we play in editor or pie as it's known. But there's this little arrow behind beside here that lets you do all sorts of things. You can preview a mobile, you can do it in a new window, you can run a standalone game as if you were running it from an EXE, you can just uh, simulate. But if we go down here, we have um, multiplayer options. So we can run as a dedicated server, if this is checked off, if it's not, we're running as a listen server, but we can set the number of players as well. Since this is a two player game, if we set number of players two, what happens when we play now is we get a new window. So we get multiplayer shootout client one. As you can see, I've got different um, names for each of my clients. So we have client one and we have the server, which is back in the first window. So as client one, let's see if I can fit this. Um, as client one, I can I can go ahead and try to shoot, and you can see on the server that that all worked. And if I go to the server, I can try my luck as well. So as you can see, everything works uh, back and forth. And so this is how you test uh, networking, is all you do is you go to play, hit the arrow, the number of players you want up to 64, although I believe Steam only allows 32 with blueprints. Um, but yeah, you basically set the number of players you want and just hit play. You know, this time we would get a third client, which doesn't work for this game. I don't believe they'll even spawn in, but that that's it. So that's how you will be able to set up your games for testing, um, you know, two to 64 players, essentially. And it does help sometimes to do a new editor window. That way you will get a client window. So this is client two, player three. Come on. We have client one or... Uh, player one and we have come on get there eventually Okay, apparently not, come on, uh, no, it's not going to like it, but we have, as you can see, game preview server, there we go, so we have the server as well, so you get the server in a window, and you can see at the top it says server, and then you can go to the other clients as well, so this will be essential um, when, when actually going and setting up your project to be networked, and so we can look very, very quickly um, at 
an example of replication. So if we go into our gunslinger here, or where is the blueprint for this guy? It is, you know what, I don't even know offhand. But if we go into the player controller, I'm sure there's something that is replicated. Apparently not. Player state, most definitely. So player number is a variable that is replicated. So when you select a variable on the right hand side, you will see replication. Now, usually it's none. And so you can choose replicated or rep notify. And if you select rep notify, which we'll get into later, you'll see it creates a function automatically called on rep player number. And we'll get into what that means later. And also, um, when you right click and you make a, oops, wrong button. And you, nope, still the wrong button. You make a custom event called uh, networking test server side. You can also uh, go into the details panel and you have replication options. You have not replicated, you have multicast, run on server, and run on Odin client. And it also has a reliable check uh, mark, which we will again get into later. So that is replication and the client server model in a nutshell. And that is how you can set up Unreal to um, test your networking. So we will uh, probably start building up a little example project, maybe a first person or third person shooter or something along those lines, or maybe work off this project or something to um, to go in and actually understand networking all the way through and through to extreme examples, starting basic and working our way up to uh, a full multiplayer game. So anyways, thanks for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, the division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media, the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. And remember, create your way.